These are some of the bravest cops in the country. Fighting crime up close and personal. Their battleground, the city of London. Move, move! The very heart of one of the most crime-ridden capitals in Europe. Gang violence. Deadly weapons. And lethal drugs. This is Brickhop's law and disorder. Stay there. Do not move. Coming up. A gunman loose on London streets. A manhunt for a fugitive. The aftermath of a brutal pub fight. I've screamed because I was scared for my life. And undercover cops close down the suspected drug dealers. I believe due to your actions that you're involved in a drug deal. London. The whole city is on red alert. A gang has just attacked someone at gunpoint. Every available squad car has been scrambled. The victim has been left in a pool of blood. Okay, it's been a report of. Uh people fighting um, down at one of the estates in the city. Just going to go down and search for the perpetrators of this. Control immediately deploys armed officers from the Met's elite Trojan unit, as well as rapid response squads. PCs Lucas and Jones are one of the first uniform patrols to answer the call. All they know right now is that someone's got hold of a gun and they're loose on the streets of London. CB mate, you should give us a description again of these suspects. Yeah, one believed to be wearing a pink T-shirt and the other one in a blue T-shirt. The stakes could not be higher. Where are they gone? Well, that's where they came down, that's what they say. Just a minute from their location, control radios a crucial update. A Trojan unit has locked down a group of youths in a tunnel. These elite firearms cops, armed with semi-automatic machine guns, think they may have found the gang. At the speed PCs Lucas and Jones are driving, they're on the scene just moments later. But they and the other uniform squad are ordered to hang back. Right now, it's too dangerous, even for them. OK, there's been a sighting of a male with a gun in the area. Our firearms officers have got a group of you've stopped um, with who matched the description. Even our cameraman doesn't quite understand just how deadly this situation could become until PC Lucas spells it out for him. I'm just going to search them out with the firearms. I wouldn't get out at the moment, mate. Just, we'll stay here. It isn't advice. It's an order. If this is the gang, then one of them has a gun. The danger is very real. As the tunnel is cordoned off to all traffic, the search starts. One of these men could still be armed and dangerous. All 850 cops who police the square mile are ready to put their lives at risk to protect the hundreds of thousands of people who travel every day to work in the city. They may not have to deal with gun crime all the time, but the unpredictable nature of a police shift means they have to be prepared for anything. They must think on their feet and react to the strangest of situations. Across the city, an area patrol has found a man stumbling in the road. He's naked from the waist up, and he's covered in blood. An alleged pub fight has got out of hand, and officers on scene need urgent backup. A squad car is quickly dispatched to control the situation. 
They've got no idea how seriously injured this man could be. I screamed because I was scared for my life for my cousin to follow me. I went in the pub, I wanted to use a toilet. People were saying to me, get out of the pub. I said to them, I've been attacked. Why are you yeah. telling me get out of the pub? They said to me, get out of the pub, trouble, trouble. So you're trouble. angry? He says he was attacked outside on the street and then went into a pub to use the toilet. But witnesses have reported a violent fight that erupted inside the pub. Even the suspect's friend contradicts his story. Obviously, when there's glass and shit flying about, obviously, innocent people are going to get hurt. If I was to ask you, have you smashed a, a drink on the floor in any pub? I'm not going to bullshit you anything. All I've done is steam my way out of the pub. If yeah. I did knock any glasses over oh, accidentally, oh, yeah. I promise you, it's out of fear. I'm not worried about it's not that. No, it's all right. Shh, shh, shh. Calm, 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 calm down. I'm a male. Right. Are you injured in any way apart from the blood you gall on your hands? Yes. This man is covered in blood, but he doesn't appear to be injured. A sinister thought is starting to dawn on the cops. It might not be his blood. We're just actually trying to establish where the blood has come from that's on that person. So we're searching the area, trying to find if anybody has seen anything or seen the person who is bleeding, because that is our concern, because it's a fair bit of blood on him. The cops radio in to all cars in the area to look for a badly beaten up man. I don't like I want to call so them no, no, no. I'm trying to slow down and behave myself. Yeah, it's tough, you know what I mean, tough, yeah. tough times, mate. It's tough times. It's changing over, right? Like, it's hard work, you know what I mean? Yeah, You've got to I swallow know. it. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. The man keeps on protesting his innocence while his friend stays very quiet. The police are suspicious and run a radio check on his ID. A warrant is already out for his arrest. I've done a check on you, the warrant outstanding on you. We go to Bishop's Gate, yeah. custody is the young officer here, mm -hmm. and we're sorting out there. Okay. Without a victim, if there is one at all, there's little more the cops can do. Apart from ask a medic to make sure that this man is okay. The person that may well have left and take themselves to hospital. We might not find him at all. We might have gone home, it might just be a small cut, but it's just bled a lot. What was a strange call-out in the first place ends even more strangely. While the main suspect is free to go, his friend is nicked. Come and ride in my yeah, car. No problem. It turns out this man was in breach of a court order for a previous crime. He will now have to justify his actions in court. They arrange a court date, because it'll be on the warrant, it will say whether it's in five days, seven days. He'll be bailed straight out of the police station to attend that court, and that's the end of that matter. After the break, fighting. The guy just jabbed me in the face like that. Well, just give me that food. Shoplifting. You all right? What you got in your pocket? And a gun, all on the streets of London. There's been a major security alert in the city of London. An elite firearm squad has locked down a seven-strong gang in a tunnel. At least one of them is believed to be carrying a gun. The tunnel's been cordoned off and dozens of cops have flooded the area. Armed officers with semi-automatic machine guns provide cover while uniformed officers start a search. Everyone is trying to remain calm but intelligence suggests there's a gun involved. Even the police dogs are picking up on the tension. Suddenly, one of the youths makes a move. He's reaching for his jacket. As he was about to be searched, this suspect reached for his coat. One eagle-eyed officer saw why. Inside it was a gun. Everyone is now under arrest.
What an officer says next, picked up on one of our microphones, makes the hair on your neck stand up. Oh, go ahead. Saved my life. Yeah. And it was in his jacket. Yeah. Saved my life. Yeah. It's a Sunday evening. On the pavement of a normally busy traffic route into the city lies what looks like an automatic pistol. Even the police are shocked. Is there anything small that needs to be searched? Yeah. 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 No worries. These cops are still on high alert. After what's happened, they know they have to be ready for anything. Crime scene officers are called in even before the suspects are taken away. This is a major crime scene, and everything has to be recorded. What I'll do is hold it and keep the top slide back. So if you take the photo like that, just like that. The suspects are all cuffed and bundled into vans. A street search has turned up nothing else, but the investigation has only just started. As for the main suspect, he's potentially now in serious trouble. Just owning a handgun, let alone walking the streets with it, carries a mandatory prison sentence. Oh, mate, listen to me. No, have a look in there. There is nothing in there. It's a clean cage. If I see anything in there that's come, that after I've got you out, it's come from you. Do you understand? Yeah. Happy that's clean. Watch your head. Thankfully, incidents like this in the city of London are rare. Across the UK, however, it's a different story. Last year, firearms were used in over 14,000 recorded offences, nearly 40 every day. Firearms officers are, are highly trained to deal with these. It is a very, very sensitive job. And if someone poses an immediate threat to officer safety or public safety, then they're likely to be taken to the ground straight away and, and handcuffed. On this occasion, the cops were lucky. One of the specially trained firearm squads spotted the gun almost immediately. The handle of a handgun has been seen uh, poking out of one of the jackets, and so the individuals have been controlled immediately and placed in handcuffs. The gun later turned out to be a replica, but it would have looked very real to the victim and the cops. Luckily, it's something they don't see often, particularly on a Sunday evening. I spoke to a colleague earlier, I said it was quiet, and then this happened about five minutes later, and that's the nature of the job. Every morning, the city of London swells with hundreds of thousands of businessmen and women on their way to work. The square mile of landmark buildings and skyscrapers is the financial heart of not just Britain, but Europe. Nearly 500 international banks are based here, dealing in billions of pounds every day. But for the cops, this area is also a magnet for criminal activity, from high-end corporate fraud to drugs, robbery and street crime. Today, it's shoplifting. Someone's dialed 999, and the cops are on their way. A man has stolen something from a computer store. A gentleman that's involved in the theft from Maplin Electronics is just up here. You find uh, most shoplifting is related to other crimes, drugs, drink, because they've got a feed a habit. I'm described as a male I see one in about his 30s, very drunk, wearing a light brown jacket. Let's have a look. The man has now left the shop and done a runner. PCs Thomas and Shahid are hot on the suspect's heels. He's now been spotted heading into another shop. We're going boots. Oh, there it is, isn't it? You all right, mate? How's it going? What you got in your pocket? Were well, you in Maplin today? There's a report from Maplin, a male fit in your description, is involved in a theft, all right? Maplin. Is there anything in your pocket you shouldn't have? Rubbish. Rubbish? Let's take you out of the store and we'll speak to you outside. Just get him over there, Trevor. The suspect is clearly drunk and not making much sense. Just put your legs apart a little bit. Stinky socks, yeah. What can you do, chap? It doesn't take long for the cops to find something suspicious. It's a mouse. What's this? That's the better what in my pocket. A computer mouse. A mouse, yeah. 
Despite the evidence, the man is still confident. Where's the receipt? Somewhere. Sorry? Somewhere. Somewhere. Right, fella, listen to me. Oh, Because we found this. Yeah, yeah. And Matt have reported that you stole it. now going. I'm arresting you, OK? Suspicion of theft. You do not if convicted of shoplifting, you could be sent to prison. But when you've had more than a few drinks like this man, the prospect of doing time apparently doesn't seem that scary. Doesn't matter. I know what it's. I know what it's about this. I'm going to police station. I'm happy. Mom. When you're a cop in the city, every crime, no matter what it is, has to be met with an immediate response. He's quite drunk, so he wasn't probably in the right state of mind to exactly choose the item he wanted. So probably the one that was closest to him and the easiest thing to get away with. And at the end of the day, I mean, even if he got £10 for it, that would have been enough for his um, next drink. Last year, City Cop solved nearly a 1,000 cases of shoplifting in the square mile alone. In an area dominated by shops and businesses, it's a major problem, one the cops couldn't take more seriously. As night falls over the city, the officers know they're entering the busiest and toughest part of their shift. Trouble has flared outside a nightclub, and control has scrambled all available response cars to attend immediately. Reports are coming in that one of the men involved is armed with a brick. Hey, on scene. As the cops arrive, they find two men shouting the odds at each other. Where's my jacket? Why have I got my fucking jacket, you prick? Get the language, Ed. Right, sir, sir. No, I, you are cool, you are calm. Keep it like that. This man is accused of threatening to brick the other guy's car. A top of the range BMW completes with an expensive custom paint job. Nice motor. Listen, he's drunk. E40 was he, man. No, no, yeah, he picked no, up no. a brick. Gone like he's going to throw it at the car. He picked up a brick. Sure. Like no, 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 no. With no dent to the car and no sign of a brick, Inspector Wright wants to listen to what the other suspect has to say. These guys notice they keep coming around you, gesturing your body in an aggressive manner, like they wanted to attack you. But before I could even talk, the guy just jabbed me in your face like that. He, 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 he just gave me that hook. And he had his hand inside. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, fight back or try and be wise, because I don't know what they had. They could have a knife or something. The inspector has heard enough and has made his mind up. Yeah, there's been a disturbance inside the club. Um, they've come out an altercation, and the guy around the corner here says that uh, it's just been alleged that he's just punched him in the face. Um, so we're going to get him arrested for an assault. Brother, an allegation that you've punched him. Been arrested for uh, assault, crazy action, probably harm. Oh, yeah, you have to be arrested. But this man is not coming in without a little dig at the officers. Come on, how many times have you done this? Come on. It's cold, his fingers are cold. Mate. Come on, don't get nervous. You don't have to cause physical damage to get convicted of assault. Every year in the square mile, there are numerous recorded assaults, despite a lack of visible injury to the victim. The suspect in this case was released without charge. After the break, Stake out. Undercover cops catch a drug dealer. We have him in view. A high speed pursuit through the streets of London. There is. And suspected gang violence. He's more like eight on one, basically. Oh. Turned on me and started hitting me. The city is equipped with the latest in police technology. Special automatic number plate recognition cameras record one million vehicles every day. If you're a criminal, 
and you're entering the square mile, your car is very likely to betray you. If it has been involved in a crime, it will flash up a police control. And one such car has just triggered the cameras. It relates to a serious crime. Vehicles come through the automatic plate readers that are situated all the way around the city, um, and it's marked up as lost or stolen. So we're just trying to kind of stop the vehicle and speak to the driver and see if it has been recovered or it is indeed stolen. PT's Gary Farmer and Sarah Gallagher are closing in on the high-powered BMW. Losing track of a suspected stolen car in London is just not an option. They must find it fast. Still with the MW. Suddenly, they spot the car stuck in traffic. There he is, yeah. Take the keys out. The officers must be careful. If the car has indeed been stolen, the two occupants could be dangerous. Hi, mate. Your vehicle? Yeah, that's right. This one? Right. When did you buy it? Tuesday, this week. This week? Yeah. OK, you've got some ID with you at all? Yeah. Where did you buy the vehicle off of? The driver's explanation for how he came to have this car seems complicated. Who did you buy it off of? I don't know, I didn't buy it. I have another one on the same. Not yet. They do a swap. Did a swap? Yeah. For a swap, I didn't buy it. Okay. I have another one on the same. Yeah. yeah. And we swap it, and he gave me the difference, 400 pounds. Okay. It was Romania. Romanian. They tell me they buy cars from here. I'm from Romania as well. Yeah. They buy cars from here, and they sell it there. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll make some further inquiries, okay? Try out what's going on. The driver's story seems plausible and he claims it can prove he owns the car. I still have their phone number. Just there with a second. Yeah, no problem. So then why has it been reported stolen? It could be anything, to be honest. But it looks like he's swapped his car for a stolen vehicle, so we're just checking all that out. And then once we know that, we can then decide what we need to do, which we see is a vehicle. The cops get on the radio to check out his story and get news back fast. And it contradicts the driver's version of events. It's now alleged he has indeed stolen the BMW. Some Romanian people have paid for, the, for a car, bought right. a car, but they've agreed on 800 and they've only given the bloke who owns the car 400. So he's put it up and stolen? And he's put it stolen, and then they've drove off and he's tried to get hold of it and they've just disappeared. Right. The original owner has told the cops that he was supposed to get paid £800. But he claims he only saw half the money before the suspect sped off in the car. So, at the moment, it's on suspicion of theft by fraud. It's a serious allegation, and it leaves the cops with little option. So, for the moment, we're going to place you under arrest on suspicion of theft by fraud. What means is we're going to take you back to the police station and we'll get your account of what happened. And then once we can establish that, we can speak to the force, then we can best carry out the investigation promptly. OK? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. OK. Which one? Have you arrested yeah, him? Yeah, both of them. You've arrested both of them, right? Yeah. Just go with that man over there, he'll take you in, all right? Okay. If the driver and his friend are convicted of stealing the BMW, they could face jail. So these guys may pay a certain amount and then they've left. The other party have put it up as stolen. So obviously we need to get their account of what's happened establish the facts and then we can take it from there. Elsewhere in the city, someone's dialed 999. There's a fight in progress and weapons may be being used. Other squads are also being sent to the area. As the rapid response cops arrive, a specialist dog unit has already stopped a group of suspects. And faced with 80 pounds of German Shepherd, they're not going anywhere. It soon becomes clear just how serious the situation is. 
There's an abandoned iron bar in the road, and one of the lads is clutching an empty bottle. Face to face with man's not so best friend, these youths are quick to tell cops their side of the story. What's happened tonight? Basically, we've come at the club, everyone's ready to go. I don't know, a little work of has happened. And everyone's got a bit heated. So turn up, block it up, and the other guys have started to attack. Minutes later, and only a few blocks away, another police unit has detained a second group. There appears to be two groups of males, this group here and the group that's been detained down the road that's had an altercation and a fight, so they're just taking details and working out what's going on. But these youths seem slightly less willing to cooperate. The men are quickly searched. The other cops have already found what they think might be two weapons on the other gang. And now it looks like they've also discovered some drugs. When we stopped and searched them for the weapons that were mentioned in the assault, uh, one of the chaps had been found to have cannabis on him. So my colleague's dealing with him now. Um, if he hasn't been dealt with for any drugs issues before, he'd be eligible for a cannabis warning. I don't know what happened between them and that. Okay. But yeah, it was, it was more like eight or one. Basically. Okay. So we've come outside and we, we, I'm saying to the, exactly what I said to him. Turned on me and started hitting me. With one group talking, the other staying tight lipped, and no obvious injuries or victims, the cops have no choice but to let all of them walk. The youth found with drugs on him was given a warning. The priority now is to prevent any more trouble, so they hold one gang back until the other group have left the area. Two groups have collided, there's no injuries on either way, and they've all been warned about their behaviour. We're going to keep this group for a little while, while the other ones disperse, make sure they go so they don't meet again, there's no more disturbance. Um, but there's no injuries and it's no real disorder. Photo of the witness, um, he said it was all handbags at dawn. It's a technical term. All right. As a new day dawns in London, the war on crime continues. The cops are locked in a constant battle to try and keep one step ahead of the criminals. In the square mile, the officers are out in force, but you wouldn't know it. They are known simply as the crime squad. They're a team of highly trained undercover cops, some of whom we can't identify. All we're doing is blending in with the public. When the thieves come to our area, they haven't got a clue whether they're officers or they're just members of the public going about their business. And before they know it, they've been arrested in the act. The crime squad is the pride of the City of London Police. Their unique surveillance and covert work mean they can get up close to criminals and catch them literally red-handed. Yesterday, some covert cops doing general monitoring in the area spotted a drug deal taking place in broad daylight in this quiet square. Police intelligence suggests it might be a regular occurrence. So today, the crime squad are back working undercover. But this time, there are more of them. And they're hoping to catch themselves a dealer. Yesterday, undercover officers think they saw the drug deal taking place between a woman and a man who rode away on a moped. It was believed that a drug deal had just taken place. Believed it was a, uh, as we call it, a dialer deal. It just turned up, quick exchange, then a male left. In hectic London, even drug dealing has been sped up. A dialer deal provides a sort of drug takeaway service for busy men and women. So uh, pretty much waiting for the same time when it happened uh, yesterday for it to hopefully happen again today. The trap is set. The spot where the deal took place yesterday is covered. A number of undercover officers are working on this job today. The square is full of people. You wouldn't know it, but some of them are cops. Building work is going on in the square, so some of the cops are disguised as workmen. Crime Squad Governor Dom Parkin is disguised as a cycle courier and rigged with a covert camera. And back up is in a van parked around the corner. Recording. They've also mounted a hidden camera on a lamppost aimed at where they think the action will take place. Another crime squad cop monitors the footage in real time and radios developments to the rest of the team. Hello, on it was lunchtime yesterday when the suspect showed up. 
All the officers can do now is wait. We have them in view. With almost perfect timing, what seems to be the same moped rider has come back to the same spot, unaware that this time there's more than one person expecting him. If the cops are right and this guy is a dealer, then there's someone missing, the buyer. On the other side of the square mile, PC's Wendy Hall and Sam Chowdhury are racing to the scene of a fight. A girl is injured. They don't know how seriously. Yeah, show us um, things here. PC Hall hits the blues and twos as her colleague puts his foot down. But as they approach the location at high speed, control radios through more information. It's not a fight, but a flash mob. They organise it usually on Facebook and places like that, where all people agree to meet up and just start having, uh, either they all wear funny T-shirts or pillow fights or stuff like that. It may only be a pillow fight, but there's still someone injured. And with literally hundreds of people and millions of feathers, trying to find a casualty is not going to be straightforward. There's no one here, is there? They hastily search the area, but the sea of people and feathers is making their task almost impossible. Finally, they've managed to find the girl. Uh, the person concerns inside with two ambulance services and another police officer, so we're quite happy that they're all right. So he must have got caught up in the crowd. <laughs> Let's hope they're not allergic to feathers. It's unusual for cops to walk away from a fight, but with pillows rather than weapons, they leave them to it. If there was any trouble, we'd uh, ask them to move on, but really they're just quite well humoured, having a bit of fun. I'm just wondering who's going to do all the cleaning up. <laughs> After the break, a fugitive desperate to escape the law. And undercover cops close down a dealer. All units, they split, moving, moving, strike, strike. It's mid afternoon in the city and response cops Kirby and Wilde are on standby. Another officer has just tried to flag down a cyclist for jumping a red light, but he refused to stop. He's crossed over the road and straight into oncoming traffic. This could be something more sinister. This hell's it, she's making off. He's a cyclist, is it? Yeah, I think so. Last seen westbound Fenchurch Street. CCTV operators are keeping a close eye on the cyclist and are guiding units on the ground towards him. So there's black top, black rucksack, so shoulder bag, three quarter length denim, so there's an IC1 male. It's now a high speed blue light chase in one of London's busiest streets. Several response cars are on the suspect's tail and they're closing in fast. He's running out of options. PC Wild goes on foot to corner the suspect and quickly gives chase. He's closely followed by a rapid response van. Meanwhile, PC Kirby drives to the other side to surprise the cyclist. The cops believe he's now looking at going into hiding. But the cops, guided by CCTV operators, think they know where the cyclist is. Yeah, he's on the 
One detained him. The man is surprised as to what all the fuss is about and believes he's done nothing wrong. Is it an offence to run away from police? Yes, stop the Stop, mate. Give me a hand. What's your life on? I don't want to admit to anything. What's your height, my I wasn't hiding. If you're running away from cops, they will always suspect you've got something to hide. Based on your actions, we're going to search you under Section 1 of PACE, OK? We're searching for stolen or prohibited articles. I'll do the bag if you want, maybe. <laughs> With no drugs or stolen items in the bag, it's not exactly clear why this man tried to get away. Why did you stop from me down the road? When you went across the centre aisle and went in the wrong carriageway, it's rather than stop for me. Because you, you shouted stop and then chased away at me, so I'm, I'm not going to... Right, you're under arrest. Further stop for police. You do not have to say anything about anything. You don't have to say anything. It's not your lateral. Anything you do, say something to your limbs. Do you understand the caution? No, he just he only went through a red light. I was just wanted to stop him and have a word. He went to go round me when I told him to stop again. He rode over the centre island into the wrong carriageway, made oncoming traffic move out of the way. And then uh, when the area car got behind, he felt to stop for the area car as well. So, yeah, instead of getting told off, he's got next. This man's stupid behaviour wasted police time and could have put other road users' lives in danger, and all because he didn't want to get told off. No matter how you try to escape, chances are the cops will always catch up with you. Yeah, we saw it at the top of uh, Jury Street. Um, got behind him, he went down Minneries, he was quite way off. And the camera picked him up, saw him come down here, and then he didn't come out. So, uh, I think, Gareth, did you find him then? Yeah, we just spotted him. Gareth Shining, just found him down the alleyway. Shining down there, just hiding down there, but yeah, good result all round. The City of London's undercover crime squad is on a stakeout. We have him in view. And this is their target, a suspected drug dealer. They believe he was here yesterday dealing drugs. Cops now think he's come back today to this exact same spot to carry out another express drug delivery, or dial a deal as they're known. Crime squad officers need to be close enough to pounce if a deal does go down. To blend in with their surroundings, some are disguised as builders. One is fitted with a secret camera, and a team in a van around the corner provides backup. A surveillance officer has fitted a covert camera to a lamppost and is monitoring the suspect in real time, radioing any movements to the cops on the ground. Now it's now making a phone call. But something is not quite right. It looks like the suspected dealer doesn't want to hang around today. Have the cops blown their cover? Or has the buyer backed out? Without a deal, they can't make a move. Suddenly, a smartly dressed man approaches the suspect. As they shake hands, the two men subtly exchange something. It could be the drugs. It happens so quickly, you can barely spot it, but the cops have. They refer to this technique as a handshake and a pass. But they've got to wait for a second pass, where the money is handed to the suspected dealer before they can strike. The cop with the covert camera has to liaise with colleagues, but he needs a good excuse to chat without blowing his cover. Excuse me, mate. Got a light. Using this officer as cover, he tries to look over his shoulder. See. Money changing hands. Not at the moment. 
The crime squad must wait for the deal to be complete before they can strike. Money has to be exchanged. I think so. The suspects are just a few feet behind this officer. Exchange. The cops think they've seen money change hands. That's all they needed. Yeah, all units, they split, move in, move in, strike, strike. The cops move fast. One of the undercover officer's body cameras captures the action. They're in the suspect's face in seconds. Right, please you've been stopped. So you're acting suspiciously. In conversation with other male. I'm gonna tell it all male. Okay. Yeah. We believe due to your actions I'm doing, I'm doing. that you're possibly involved in a drug deal. I'm doing your own mate. Okay. The suspect, clearly taken completely by surprise, looks so nervous that one of the cops is prompted to give him some friendly advice. That one off, mate, because I'm rather fast, all right? Go on, anyway. Go, go, it's all right then. We'll be chilled out. You'll, you'll be chilled out. The officers quickly find what they're looking for. This could be the money taken during the alleged drug deal. In all, the cops have found £150 in banknotes. Based on what they witnessed and the evidence seized, the cops then arrested this man and took him back for further questioning. But the crime squad didn't stop there. We searched his business premises. In his locker, we found a number of other wraps of white powder, which was found to be cocaine. We also searched his house, and again there we found more wraps of cocaine and weighing scales and cutting agents and other items associated with drug dealing. As for the smartly dressed businessman in the white shirt, he was also arrested around the corner. And on him, police found three wraps of white powder. That white powder has been analyzed by the laboratory and it's found to be cocaine. Uh, both men were arrested, interviewed, and both have admitted that, yes, I made a phone call to this guy. I asked him to deliver some cocaine to me at this location. And the, the drug dealer, he admitted the same thing. Trying to stop the scourge of drugs is an absolute priority for police in London. And the undercover cop's message to drug dealers is clear. Break the law on their patch, and you may well become their next scalp. Brick Cops, law and disorder, taking you to the front line in the battle against crime. Hunting fugitives. Catching con men. I believe they're targeting victims in banks. Cracking down on drugs. You take any drugs at all? Smoke a bit of cannabis, yeah. Our cameras capture all the action as these cops capture their criminals. Yeah, 620, active message, miles running away. 